A few years ago, one of my friends was riding down a hill in San Diego and riding pretty fast to catch a green light. The next moment, he woke up in the hospital. What happened was an impatient pickup truck ended up T-boning him because they wanted to make a right turn on the red light and they didn't stop for him. He's really lucky to be alive. And the reason for that isn't because he was wearing a helmet. It's because he got really lucky. He wasn't wearing a helmet at all. He doesn't have brain damage. He's still alive. He didn't fall into a coma. He just woke up in the hospital and now he's perfectly okay. But if he was wearing a helmet, he probably wouldn't even have to go to the hospital in this instance. <laughs> but even if you do have a helmet, how sure are you that your helmet will protect you and potentially save your life in a crash? Bike helmets have mostly been the same for the past 30 or so years, but should they? Ex Nito sent over their old school helmets because they wanted to rethink a bike helmet and make it safer, especially as more people are riding e-bikes and people are riding faster. And this is a helmet that very well could save your life. Just like the sponsor of this video, Wabi Cycles. Wabi recently upped their track component game. Stick around to the end of the video and check out Wabi linked in the description to see how they can help you build the buttery fixed gear of your dreams. <laughs> So nobody likes wearing helmets, but we wear helmets anyway because a helmet's job is to save your life, potentially, in the event of a crash. Most bike helmets on the market are rated on the CPSC standard that protects riders' head injury impact up to 15 miles per hour. I don't know about you, but I'm, when I'm riding my bike, I'm and up to speed, I'm riding 18, 19, 20 plus miles per hour. I didn't even know this until I started to do research to review for this video, but the helmet that I was using before wasn't enough to protect me when I'm up to speed on my bike. But if you're an e-bike rider, that's even scarier since you're cruising at 20 miles per hour and you're going upwards to 30 miles per hour just on the flats and a regular CPSC helmet isn't going to protect you in the event of a crash, or at least not enough. But the Dutch, you know the Dutch, they love their bikes and their standards. They came up with a new helmet standard called the NTA 776 rating standard in 2016, and helmets that are certified for this standard, like the x Nido Old School Helmet, can protect riders from head injuries up to 27 miles per hour. On top of that, something that really impressed me with this helmet is that they have a really handy manual that tells you how to get a proper fit with the helmet, and tells you that how important a proper fit is for your helmet to be safe on you. And the thing that impressed me most with x Nido is that they have an accident replacement helmet policy where it says right here, ex Nita will replace your helmet for free in the event that you're involved in an accident that damages your helmet. That just makes it feel like that ex Nita actually cares about you as a person and cares about your safety more so than other companies where they would just happily sell you another helmet if yours gets damaged. To be honest, this is an expensive helmet. It goes for 150 bucks. Part of that is because it is a more protective helmet than others and they can charge a higher amount for that. But also, this helmet has lights in the front and back, built in. It's USB rechargeable and it keeps you safer that way. Now these lights, they're not enough like to illuminate the road or anything, but they are a great set of secondary lights, especially if you like just forget a pair of lights or you just need to be seen, you're going out for a quick ride. I actually found the lights super useful in my experience. Like I host group rides every morning, like before the sunrise and then we watch the sunrise as it's coming up on our bikes. It's great. And a lot of times riders forget their lights. And if when I have this helmet, I can just be like, hey, you can take my lights. I've got an, an additional pair of lights. And just the fact that the lights are on your head instead of on your bike makes them a whole lot more visible. It makes you feel a lot safer when you're on your bike. Now I wouldn't use this as my only set of lights, but they are a great addition to a helmet since you always want to wear your helmet and you always want to have lights. So, normally I'd be pretty mad about my light dying. This is actually the perfect opportunity because the light's dead. I forgot to charge it, but at the very least, 
my helmet has a backup light so I can still ride and not feel totally sketchy on my ride home. There's three different modes. The front always just stays solid illuminated because you're not trying to make yourself dizzy with flashing lights on your forehead. <laughs> but the back has three modes. There's flashing, solid, and this weird loopy effect, and then off. And after wearing this helmet, I almost feel like every helmet should have lights. It just makes so much sense to keep you safe when you're on your bike. It comes with a 600 milliamp hour battery, which translates to a suggested 10 hours of battery life, but I've gotten about 12 hours so far, and only now has the charge indicator come on. So battery life is surprisingly great on this thing. The only major gripe that I have with this light system is that, well one, it's kind of hard to open the charging port, and two, the uh, current iteration of the charging port is micro USB instead of USB-C. It's like, it's 2022, we've had USB-C for what, like nine, 10 years now? Can we just please use USB-C? Fortunately, Ex Nido, they sent me some insider scoop information and their new helmets will come with USB-C and that production run is slated for September. So if I were you, like USB-C is just so important to me. I refuse to buy anything that still puts micro USB in the year 2022. It's just embarrassing. It's just, they're, they're cutting costs for no reason and making it wildly inconvenient for you to go dig out a micro USB charger. It's like, Let's use USB-C, guys. It's great. It's universal. It's the new standard. iPhone. Organic, vegan, non-GMO tap water bottles available now at zacalardo.com slash merch. But they'll ship out on August 31st because I'm going on vacation. And you'll be seeing this when I'm on vacation. So thanks for your support and your patience. Sure, the ex Nido old school helmet is safe, but is it comfortable? That's the second most important thing if you want to actually wear your helmet when you're riding your bike. And I must say, so as much as they like to talk about how to get a great fit in the manual and how helpful the manual actually is, like, thank you. That's an lost art form. <laughs> I found that the straps are a bit loose, which is a double-edged sword because the straps being loose makes it easy to adjust, but it also makes them go out of adjustment very easily. So whenever I hang my helmet from the straps, I do find that I have to pull the straps a bit to readjust it. Whereas pretty much every single other helmet that I've had have been pretty set and forget. Like they're hard to adjust, but once you get it, it's good for its entire lifespan. And the second major grip that I have with the helmets as far as the fit goes, is this ratchet on the back. It is super loose. Let's see if I can do it now. If I'm turning my head or if I'm getting into the drops and I like, need to look up, the ratchet loosens up. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of concerning because it says, warning, for maximum protection, the helmet must fit well and all retention straps must be securely fastened. Honestly, because it doesn't fit super well, mostly because of the ratchet that loosens up while I'm riding my bike, it doesn't feel super safe. And it's not a super comfortable helmet. There's not a whole lot of vents on it. There is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little vents and that's understandable when you consider that it's mostly geared to be an e-bike helmet because you're not pedaling as hard, so you're not gonna be sweating as hard. But if Ex Nido wants us regular organic acoustic bike riders, pedal bike riders, to buy this helmet, it's wildly uncomfortable, honestly. It gets really sweaty. Even when I'm just riding my bike and cruising around like at 60 degrees, when like early morning here, it's like 60 degrees, I am still sweating a lot in this helmet. Here in California, this is like a one and a half season helmet if you want to be comfortable in it and not sweat a lot. And it's unfortunate because it's such a safe helmet. It's such a cool helmet with the lights but it makes me not want to wear it because it is so darn sweaty if you're riding a pedal bike. One thing I do enjoy that is comfortable about the Ex Nido Old School is it's a very simple shape. 
and that makes it super comfortable to wear in the wind. Because some helmets, they can be really comfortable to wear when you're going with the wind or against the winds. But once you get in a crosswind, you could like throw your head around because it tries to be so aerodynamic in one position. But because it's just pretty much a bowl on top of your head, any direction that the wind is blowing, it's not really gonna toss your head around. And I found that because it doesn't try to be super aero with these fins poking out of the back, it is a great style helmet if you ride with a roll top bag, especially if you ride with a roll top bag with drop bars like I do. Other helmets can knock against the roll top part, but this one doesn't, and I found that pretty comfortable at least. If they sort out the ratcheting, then sure, I could recommend it to anyone that rides an e-bike for $150, because other helmets don't look this sweet and this simple, and aren't going to protect you as much unless they have the fancy pants new NTA8776 Dutch protection rating. But because fit is such an important aspect for how safe you'll be in your helmets, this one, the ratcheting system doesn't fit super well and it loosens up if you're riding your bike and swinging your head around. And if you're an organic acoustic pedal bike rider, I... As safe as it is, I just can't recommend it because it gets so hot and sweaty. You'd just be a lot more comfortable, enjoy your ride more on a regular road bike helmet, even though it isn't as safe. x Nito is really on the right path to innovating with helmets and making a really killer product if they can just make it more ventilated, keep it as safe, and make a ratcheting system that is a lot more secure. Speaking of things worth your money, this portion of the video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. From Wabi's own meticulously hand-built wheels to the track lacrosse ready velocity coils to the ever popular H plus one archetypes laced to your favorite hubs from Phil Wood, Grand Comp, DT Swiss, and my personal favorite, the Suzu Pro Maxes. Top it off with the most reliable tires from Continental and Panoracer, throw in an EAI cog in the flavor of your choice, and your favorite chain from KMC and Izumi, and your bike will make your inner fixie kid squeal with joy. So go ahead, check out Wabi Cycles and their component selection linked in the description. A fixie famous shoutouts to Mario Perez, Brandon Black, David K, Gio DeZero, Julian Corona, Ryan Witt, Scott Polongi, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.